Hello, my name is Andy Rosner. Um, I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois at Chicago in the Drew Lab. Um, and today I'll be talking to you about uh, discovering the interactions of Candida auris and related species with hyperproteomics. Um, and this is in collaboration with the Tumis Teresa Mera's lab at the University of Michigan. So uh, I'm going to be talking about fungal pathogens. And fungal pathogens are microorganisms that uh, aggregate on all different kinds of surfaces. Uh, can aggregate in soil, like Aspergillus seen here, um, on hard surfaces, like acrimonium uh, acrimo uh, right here, uh, and in humans. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the candida species do here. So candida species are found to be urgently dangerous according to the CDC and the WHO, um, and that's why um, I'm focusing on them. Uh, you see here that Candida auris and Candida albicans are in the critical group, and this is based upon death, spread, uh, dangerous phenotypes, such as multidrug resistant. And here I have uh, also highlighted Candida homolonae because um, despite it not having the same amount of uh, deaths and uh, uh, spread as the other Candida species, it is still multidrug resistant, which is a dangerous phenotype to have. Uh, so, uh, as you can see here, one of the more dangerous phenotypes you know, is that uh, these species can aggregate at elevated temperatures. You see here that Candida auris can aggregate at temperatures as high as 42 degrees Celsius, which is about the um, temperature that a human has when we have a temperature. So, uh, there's been a huge uh, push to study these species, um, but mostly what's been studied is the genome and transcriptome. Uh, and uh, what I am interested in is the proteome and interactome. And here we can see that the protein uh, annotation scores uh, here shows how poorly characterized candida proteins are. So the annotation scores uh, shown here are from Uniprot, um, and annotation scores are uh, a heuristic, basically. So over here at five, we have uh, proteins like p53. It's like where everybody and their mother has like a publication on p53, and there's a lot. It's very, very well characterized. Whereas over here is um, proteins that we basically just know exist. Uh, and what you can see from this graph, pretty um, noticeably, is that uh, compared to Cerevisiae. Uh, candida species are severely under annotated, their proteomes. Um, so, uh, what we want to do is uh, characterize those a little bit. Uh, so, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, uh, my lab specializes in something called cofractionation. And uh, this is how we're going to characterize these mostly uncharacterized proteomes and interactomes. Uh, so, this uh, has been proven to work. We show that we can systematically determine confirmed complexes and previous some known interactions in like 13 unmodel, uh, non model plant species, uh, build a uh, global compendium of human protein complexes. It's been used to uh, directly examine the composition of multi protein complexes among diverse, diverse metazoan model organisms. And it's also been used to do global, global proteomic analysis on uh, Candida albicans um, itself. So uh, it's been proven to work, and uh, what we're going to use it to do is create a complex maps. So this is an overview. Uh, I will be going into this very shortly of how cofractionation works. So here uh, we start with our, uh, our model organisms. We lyse the cells genteely so as to keep the multi-protein uh, complexes intact. And then we separate via chromatography. Um, we can separate via like size exclusion, ion exchange, isoelectric point, and then we gather them in fractions or these wells. And essentially, if whenever I'm going to be showing you a lot of elution profiles, uh, when you're taking a look at these, the wells correspond to the x axis in which fractions they are, and the y axis corresponds with the abundance of proteins, the proteins in their abundance. So you see here that when we capture this protein, this green protein, that they uh, these two uh, parts elute together right here. Um, and same thing with this red uh, 
uh, protein complex that all its proteins are looped together because they were found in these two different wells, right? So uh, what do we do with these elution profiles? Well, we can use these to evaluate the correlation scores um, and po predict po possible interactions. So if all of these proteins elute together, they come out in the same place, we can say that these have a high correlation score are more likely to be interacting. Um, and if their elution profiles are like very off, we can say that, oh, these probably don't interact because they're coming out at different fractions. So what do we do with this? We uh, take these, we put the correlation scores, external interaction data, and gold standard interactions in the machine learning pipeline, and we cluster high competence interactions into complexes. And then we verify this with follow-up experiments. So uh, let's take a look at some addition profiles. So here with first co-fractionation and so part of positive control proteins eluding together. So uh, these are um, highly conserved predicted proteins of uh, Canada auris. Here's the exoribonuclease and it's uh, a couple of its, um, its subunits and they're all eluding together. The 40S ribosome is, and some of the subunits are all eluding together. And then over here, we have Canada hemoloni and the proteasome in two separate, separate uh, co-fractionations, uh, showing that these subunits um, are eluding together, even if we use a different chromatography separation. So uh, we can use these highly conserved proteins as our gold standard interactions to train our machine learning algorithms and start characterizing under annotated proteins. So uh, what does that look like um, in a more granular scale? So here I have um, size exclusion chromatography uh, candidate or solution profile heat map, and this is ordered by Pearson correlation. So essentially this just means that we put together proteins here with similar elution profiles. So uh, we can take a look, I just showed you the 40S ribosome and you can see that they're all grouped together here. Um, but let's take a look at the proteasome, which is all grouped right here. So if we take a look at the proteasome and the alpha and beta core subunits, they're all eluding together. But what we see here is that there's an uncharacterized protein that also eludes with it. Um, which is good because this is the when you take a look at the uh, heat map that these are the only proteins eluding here. So this gathers evidence that this uncharacterized protein is actually co-eluding with the proteasome. And if that wasn't enough, we also took a, a look at Candida hemoloni and the orth log of that uncharacterized protein also uh, co-eludes with the with the proteasome core. Uh, so we've sent this uh, off to our collaborators to do some knockouts and verifying experiments. So that's just one protein out of all of these proteins right here um, that we would like to characterize more. And that's why we're doing the high throughput method to try and uh, elucidate some of these, some of the uh, functions of these proteins, or at least the interactomes, who they interact with. So what did we learn? That Canida auris and related fungal pathogens have dangerous phenotypes and that they are different across species. Co-fractionation is a tested interactome characterization method that can help us map protein complexes. And we can use orthologs combined with co-fractionation to characterize previously unknown protein complexes and in interactions. Um, and that is it. Uh, thank you to my lab and thank you for having me. Are there any questions? I have, I have a question on that on that protein that you identified um, as part of the proteasome. Does it have orthologs in other species? Did you? Uh, yeah. So we looked. About it, it does not. No. It doesn't have an ortholog in other species. Um, but I have done an orthology. Uh, I, I've actually done an entire. I took out the slides because I only had ten minutes. I've done an entire uh, orthology sort of deep dive of like I uh, I used ortho MCL, uh, which is a orthology annotation tool, take a look at um, the proteomes of all the candida species and uh, map their entire proteomes to ortho groups um, uh, related to each other and related to all the fungi. Does it, um, like an alpha fold 
structure? Does that look like anything? Is it is it is it a folded protein for one thing? Is yes, uh, it has a. Uh, oh, I can't recall this one, but yes, uh, we have done that. Um, actually, I believe that this uh, ortholog was found from a uh, structural sim similarity and not um, not a, yeah. a sequence similarity. You can try, I mean, if, if you do the, you know, get the alpha fold model and um, try it, there's a website called FoldSeq where you can yeah. upload and, or, you, I mean, you can even see it in the EBI structures where like all of the, all of the proteins with similar structures. Um, I, I believe that's where, how this one was found. Is that what, how, okay. Yes. That, you know, you might get some annotations that way, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. Yeah.